following summer. And he had gone back to work probably the end of August, first part of September, and I was working with my employer trying to figure out how to get him on my benefits. And my employer does cover for domestic partnerships, but we'd have to be living together for six months. And you'd have to provide proof, well, we haven't been living together for six months at this point. So I had asked my, the individual down with the benefits department, I said, so what happens if we were to get married? Well, then the benefits would kick in immediately. I said, well, then I guess I know what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> I hung up the phone. I called Chris. I said, what do you think about us getting married like now? He goes, oh, okay. I said, if we get married, I can get you on the benefits. You know we're going to be married anyway, and we know we can just take care of this. He goes, that's true. He goes, okay, let, let's do this. So I picked up the phone, and I called my best friend, Trace, and I said, dear? She goes, yes. I said, can you do me a favor? She goes, for you, Zoopy, anything. I said, well, it's a big one. She goes, huh, like I haven't heard that before. <laughs> I said, well, Chris and I want to get married. She goes, yeah, I know that. I said, but we want to get married next Friday. What? In Iowa. Can you make that happen for us? <laughs> oh, for the <laughs> Well, I can't talk to you anymore. I have to go because i got to get this figured out. So <laughs> she hung up and she was online researching where we could get married. How could this happen? And the very last place she called was... Um, in Worth County, up in northern Iowa, just over the border, a little town called Northwood. And she had talked to the gal at, their, at this courthouse, the city hall, and said, you know, I don't know how you feel about this. I know it's legal in your state, but you know it's a small community. We understand. But, you know, my best friend and his partner really want to get married, and they would like to get married you know, soon. She goes, well, how soon? She goes, Friday. Oh, so she's like, really? I don't know if we could make this happen. She goes, well, if we could, we, we, you know, it would be really nice. And she said, well, I need you to talk to the judge. So he's in between cases at this time. Here's his phone number. Give him a call. So, so she did and explained the situation. He was thrilled. He goes, absolutely. You know what? He goes, I'm excited because this is going to be the 15th same-sex couple that I have married since it's been legal in Iowa, and it's on September 15th. And he said, you know what, we're not doing it at the courthouse. We're going to go down to the city park on the river, and I'll, I'll marry them in the gazebo, and I'm going to write a special ceremony for them. So we got married on September 15th in Northwood in the gazebo alongside the river. Wow. Wow, what a story. Mm, this is like really, a fairy tale. It, it is. really was. No, no pun intended, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I know you guys have a sense of humor. And I, I told them earlier. <laughs> I said, you know, how quickly you guys got together. It's like you're lesbians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, second date. Here we go. We're married. You know, and it's, it, it's funny because it really was. It really was. You know, I, I thought the same thing, too. You know, goodness. I think you've killed your co-host here. Yeah. <laughs> But I really, I thought the same thing, you know, because I've always heard the stories, you know, of, of the lesbian, of lesbians always getting together and they're, they're moving in right away and all this and that. And I'm like, God, it really is like we're uh, just a couple of lesbians. We just can't, <laughs> we just can't wait for anything. We just got to do it like now. So, but I don't care. I'm happy, and that's really all that matters to me. So. Well, did you get the toaster like on Ellen, or you know, <laughs> crockpots? <laughs> crock Anybody a need a crockpot? Crock we have crockpots. <laughs> it was our reception was in November, the Saturday just before Thanksgiving, and we actually, well, we had the community center in Bowabic. Not Mountain Iron. No, they had a function going on, so we were oh unable my. to get so the community center. Oh my! So you couldn't trump it as a city no. councilman? No, unfortunately <laughs> not. You know, it's a pretty important event. It's for the. Virginia Regional Medical Center Foundation, oh, okay, so okay. pretty important. Okay, I was born there, so of course yeah. we've got to. Yeah. 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 But we, our reception, we, we were, I mean, it was full. Mm -hmm. It was full. I mean, full I had house. family, aunts and uncles, great aunts and uncles that have that traveled from great distances to be there. Oh. And it was really, it was really something to see that, you know, because these are, you know, people in their 80s and 90s, and here they are supporting us. And I remember telling my family, it's like, wow, it's like midnight and all of you guys are still here at our wedding reception. <laughs> now, all the wedding receptions I've ever been to, you guys leave at 8. They said, are you kidding? This is the best wedding reception we have ever been to. This is what we're talking about, and we are so happy for the two of you. Oh, oh my God. It just keeps getting better. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Well, we have some clips from the Mountain Iron City Council. They may have already run, but uh, if the, any of you watching <laughs> on TV, you may be seeing uh, Tony in the City Council of Mountain Iron, Minnesota. And I'm sure you're the first openly gay city councilor in the history of I would have to say so. Mountain Iron. Yes. So At good least for openly you. anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we never know. <laughs> never know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so thrilled. This is just the best. Thank you, Mark, so much for inviting me. Well, this is Claudia, that, Claudia Scalco, that, who's been on the show, that uh, introduced us. So Yeah, she's very near thrilled. and dear to our hearts yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she's a wonderful, wonderful friend. Do either one of you, we've got less than three minutes left, and um, is there any message that you would have for people that maybe live in greater Minnesota that, you know, might be struggling with coming out or being open and out about who they are and I think the, the I think the best thing for me and what worked probably the best for me is you know I was confident when I came out I was ready and I've co I've been confident I've kept my head up high and this is who I am and you know I think because of that I've had a, a lot of people have come to respect that you know what he's not hiding behind this it's who he is they've come to love my husband Chris um, it's I think that's probably one of the best pieces of advice I can get. Just be who you are, you know, just be confident. And you know what? You'll be surprised. A lot of people, when they see that level of confidence, people will support you. Great. And I think that, you know, you can't be rushed into doing it either. I mean, I mean <laughs> oh, spoken yeah. by well, <laughs> There's that. I mean, do as we say, don't do as yeah, we have. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, don't you know, try this at home. Folks. <laughs> yes, right. You know, yeah, I did it on my own time. He did it on his own yes. time. I mean, he waited yes. till he was 35. I did it when I was 22. I mean, granted, I didn't do it the way I had planned, or, <laughs> but you have to do it when yes. when you're ready to do it. You know, you can't let other people dictate when when you're comfortable with doing that. So you know, there's there's people out there. You know, if, if you need somebody, you know, reach out. There's, a, there's other people out there. You just have to reach out. You know, if you're having difficulties, you know, getting bullied, reach out. Reach out to the people that are important to you. They'll, they'll always be there for you. Absolutely. Great. And you've only had one bad incident that yes. we talked yes. a, a yes. little bit yep. about, and that was a, a hate letter. Well, and that's, that's something that we've had, a, as a couple, we've had an issue with. I had my own... Oh, difficulties okay, okay. when I first moved to the Iron Range. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, but it was an isolated incident. It happened once, and you know, then I've never had any more issues. So. You know, I think you're both talking about something. Sometimes bad things happen. Absolutely. Yep. But less likely to happen than our worst fears. Yes, that, that so, is true. Yeah. Because you know, it was scary coming out at first. Was you know, it was like. How are people going to take this, you know, a small town? But it's just amazing the support you have out there when you do come out. And, you know, it's be confident in who you are. Don't be afraid to be who you are. And it's, it's quite amazing when you find out how much support and how much people do love you and will be there for you. Yeah. We're getting the wrap. Thank you for being on Bye Thank Cities. You. Join Thank us you so in. much. Thank you. Bye Thank for you. now. Bye for now. Tony Zuponsich and Chris Zuponsich from Mountain Iron, Minnesota. <laughs>